What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of the RTG career mode, it's episode number 50 return today on the back of our win over Crystal Palace, we are heading into the season finale knowing in the Premier League final day if we win away against Brighton we are Premier League champions. Uh, for context, Chelsea mathematically if you're playing devil's advocate could catch us because of the goal difference swing, we're not really considering them as a possibility, uh, but Man City they're away against Bournemouth so if they win we'll need to match their results. So even a draw for them and we still need to get a draw ourselves as well so we lose this game away against Brighton we won't be champions Man City will get at least a point but if they win then we need to win as well after this we'll have the FA Cup final against Man City but before it this is it we dive into it the Premier League final day where a win sees us become Premier League champions for the first time in Swansea City history destiny is in our own hands heading to the south coast of England Let's not show you on the final day, yeah? Come on, you swans. Had to bump it up for four minute halves heading into this game as well. I I get asked every now and then, like, why why do you play on three minute halves? I just prefer quicker games. I just I just prefer games that uh, start and finish quicker. But um, for the biggest of games, you will see me jump them up to four minutes for a uh, for a little bit more action and uh, more drama as well. But to be honest, I wouldn't mind one bit if we just win this one nil today. As Evan Ferguson on the swivel fires it way over the bar. I had more time than I realised. I feel very confident today, I must say. I, I, think, I, I think we will be champions. I, I believe it. You know, that, that, that loss to, uh, to Newcastle hurt a lot. And really, we shouldn't have lost that for all the chance we had. But on the back of the win against Palace... Yes, I trust the boys to get it done. And it's the rifle who shoots us in to an early lead inside the first 10 minutes. This is not the first time in the save he scored a goal where it's been quite close to the keeper. He doesn't seem to hit it with much accuracy, but he hits it with an awful lot of power. And Anton's 13th gives us the opener. I believe we'll be champions. Listen, I've bottled a final day league championship a couple of times. I've bottled a European qualification on the final day a couple of times. And if you really want to get harsh and you really want to bring up some painful memories, well, in car, I think the flag was up anyway. Um, I've also bottled, <laughs> for those that watch this, you remember it well, I've also bottled Premier League safety on the final day in a Norwich Football Manager save when we, we went 37 games out of the bottom three and then went down on the final day. One of the most painful things ever. But I often talk, oh, great save Alex Merritt. I often talk about it. It's the struggling moments, it's the failure, it's the pain, it's the hurt that makes you stronger, that you learn the most from. And I, I have learned a lot from my failures in this save, let alone in FC 24. Still up by one, but that, that second goal is coming. Where are you going? Where are you going? Where are you going? Oh, that's a lovely ball through that to Jeremy. Pegs it back into the middle. More in controls. It's 1-1. First chance for Brighton, and it results in a goal. How often do we talk about that? Okay. Bayer with the uh, level up. We haven't got any goal updates yet from the Vit uh, Is it called? Not the Vitality. Vitality? Is it still called the Vitality? Yeah, of course it is. But, um, I don't know why I got confused there. But, um, but even so, even so, we know that we need to win. We're not leaving it to chance, man. We need to win this. It's, oh, my goodness, no. No, no, no. Oh, I can't believe it. Double up for Bayer. And in a matter of minutes, we go from a goal up to 2-1 down. Well, Brighton are just outside of a European place, so they need to win to keep European football dreams alive. <sighs> what a f finish, mate. Bust out of the grid, apologies for language. Oh, what a finish. And he is finished. And he's given us the level of pokes it over the keeper and into the bottom corner. Swans level it before the break. What a first half. Man, I miss when you could get the goal updates at half time. It's so frustrating knowing now you, you've got no idea what's going on. I don't know why you've taken that out of the game. I really don't. 
But it means going into the second half. Well, again, a point, a point might be enough. A point might be enough. But if Man City are winning, then it won't be. So, we we know. Yeah, we get a goal update there at Selhurst Park, but it doesn't matter. Chelsea, Chelsea can't catch us. The goal difference is, uh, well, they can catch us, but they'll still be behind on goal difference. So, I don't care what's going on at Selhurst Park. I just want to know what's going on in Bournemouth. As we still find ourselves tied. I don't want to leave this chance, man. I, I, I can't see Andoni doing us a favour. We need to find a third goal and a winner. That's a, oh, that's a goal kick. He's eight. He's eight. He's eight. 22 minutes to go. Dead itch does brilliantly as per... And pokes it through the gap right away. We go. Look at look at the navy shirts going forward here. Oh, can he get away? Kunonan! Oh, Anton Kunonan! Oh, Anton Kunonan! Patrick on the final day. From the rifle, Swans in front for the second of the game. I did not trust Jow to go all the way, so drags out the defender and plays it back to AK. And Swans in front. That's the second Premier League final day AK has had in five seasons. But this one, a lot more noteworthy. 15th of the year, Swans in front. Now can we hang on to the win and the Premier League Championship? Yes, Yusuf went in. And again, and again, and again. Oh, oh, Hassan, you are such a warrior, mate. You are such a warrior. Eep, eep. That's fine. I see you, dead itch. All right, all right. Noosa! I can't show respect because I'm too hype. The XC goal gives us the dagger and wraps the Premier League up. Raskin shot. Rushworth claims and that is going to do it. Swansea City are going to avoid the escape and come from behind to win their first ever Premier League Championship. We might get a fifth goal in stoppage time just for the boys here. No, nope, headed away by Charlie, but that is going to do it. Swansea City's first ever Premier League title. We did it the hard way. We've done the whole season the hard way. The injuries, the struggles, the bad luck, the late concedes. But what did I say? You learn a lot more from your struggles than you do from your successes. But this is what gets you to success, going through the struggle. Swansea City are Premier League champions. Come on! The old Swansea would have lost that late on. Instead, we come through with the win. Yep, we are no longer a losing team, but a winning team. And in the end, a draw would have been enough due to Bournemouth drawing 2-2 with Manchester City. But we, we weren't to know that. We, we weren't to know that, man. We, we get the job done. And we are champions of the Premier League. As Carl gets to lift it as well. A AK. With the hat trick though. I would have loved to. I said before. I, I don't know why you can't change captains mid-game. It's so frustrating. Like you can do it on FM. No problem at all. But I feel like. You know. Listen. I, R Rushworth probably should. Be able to. What do you mean Brighton relegation? You're eighth. What are you talking about? And why don't you ask me about the championship? Are you kidding me? First in club history. Why is my voice going so high? Um, I lost my train of thought. But yeah, to be fair, Carl, Carl probably should be allowed to lift the trophy considering he's been our captain all season long in the games where he hasn't been there. But I, I would have loved to have given it to Canoon for that man-in-a-match hat-trick 
that gives us the Premier League Championship. So uh, quickly before the uh, the FA Cup final then, one final look at the table. Swansea win it by three in the end on the back of Man City's draw and Chelsea finishing third. West Ham sneaking into fourth on the uh, on the final day as well with Arsenal. Must have... Uh, oh, Drew, yeah, Drew won one with Newcastle as West Ham's win over Fulham puts them in the Champions League for next year. Arsenal in fifth then. Uh, Manchester United sixth. And Liverpool seventh as Brighton did indeed finish in eighth place and weren't relegated, unlike what the... Post match interview said there. For us, best defence record in the division once again. Absolutely brick walled in the back line. Pacho made a big difference for us as Aston Villa and Newcastle are up at the top 10. Spurs in 11th, tough season for them. And the bottom three in the end were Crystal Palace, Leicester, and Everton down to the Championship. And as for the player stats, well, Byers Brace on the final day against us saw him win the Golden Boot with Harlan dropping his second. Evan Ferguson uh, finishing the top five for us in the year with 20 and 32. Could have been much better and should have been better really based on the start. We're still pleased to see a first player without scoring 20 plus goals in a season for us in the save. Kanuna, not far, not far behind to be fair, in 11th with 15 and 38. Great record for the rifle, including the hat-trick on the final day. And Noosa, of course, he only scored five of those 10 goals with us, but even so, still nice to see him get in the top 25. Uh, Haaland winning the, well, no, it should be Tattoo, he did it in one fewer game. Screw it. That, that, that's tattoos, we know. With Kanunen in third with 12 as well. And did we get anyone else in the top 25 for assists as well? Yes, we did. Yusuf sneaking in there. And, of course, Kyle winning the Golden Glove for the first straight year. 18 in 38. I still might look to replace him for next season onwards. As for the team of the season, well, as you can see, despite Swans winning the championship, we only ended up getting one man in there. But if it was only going to be one man... Oh, well, let's just say on the final day performance, I think he deserves it. Go on, Kanunen! Lone team of the season representative. How we did have a single member of our back four, as Bayern must have won the Golden Boot. Obviously, Rushworth to go through the tournament due to uh, uh, winning the Golden Glove. And, uh, and Tattoo also uh, winning the uh, the assist title this year as well. But how how none of our back four or Rushworth got in the team of the season, I don't understand that. We only lay in 28 goals. So this is it. Final game of the season. FA Cup final. Looking to win our second in three years. And for Manchester City, they need to win this to avoid their first trophy this season of the save. They're the best team in the world right now. But this would be a very rare, poor year from Guardiola's team. Unless they can win this final. We're going for that historic first ever league and cup double. And I believe in my boys to get the job done at Wembley. And win our third domestic cup in three years seasons. So heading into the final uh, Man City's lineup, they're going with a 4-3-3 attack with Edison between the sticks and the back four being Issa Kabore, uh, Araujo, Rudiger and also Nuno Mendes at left back. Rodri and interestingly enough, Kian Brecken at a DM duo. Okay, fair enough. Uh, as Jude Bellingham is the attacking mid and the front three is about as dangerous as it can get. Rodri, uh, Rodrigo sorry, on the right, Haaland spearheading the three and Foden on the left hand side. FA Cup final, the final game of the season as we go for a historic first ever league and cup double come on you swans you know a lot of people have you believed that the fa cup has lost its spark it's lost its magic but to me cup final day will always be one of the most iconic days and the day i circle on my calendar at the start of the season as well i i, I still love it I, I i still love it and i uh, i think i always will yes ferguson is quite tired for this game funny enough i don't know why um you know, you've got the normally sunshine basking you at uh, Wembley. Two, two of the best teams in, in the country going head to head ordinarily. Oh, great save, Carl! And it's always a, uh, a fantastic day to look forward to in the football calendar. That is an excellent save by Rushworth, who's come under a lot of fire this season, mainly from me. But that is a brilliant save early to keep us still tied and keep us still goalless. Ferguson! 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 Oh! Off the crossbar, lightning fast start at Wembley. Phonetic starts the game. Calmed down a bit since then. Still tired at 0 0. I'm wary of the fact that on this near side here, when the, oh, when the sunlight is uh, directly on the players, it's kind of hard to see. Just in that little pocket of space there. Um, who, who's who? Because the, the pale blue, the sky blue of the Man City shirts is kind of clashing a little bit with the white of our swans, especially with the white shorts they've got as well. And I couldn't not put them in their home kit for this cup final. Stedich does well there, will it, mate? And we should get the danger away. Still tied at 0-0. 
And it was a frenetic start. Wait, waiting for that next chance. Now, Mike, come here. Tattoo wins it back. He's got Ferguson in the middle. Keep running, Tattoo. And now, can you finish? Oh, second time we've hit the bar. Second time we've hit the bar in 35 minutes. I feel like Darwin Nunez right now. Yeah, did you see that stat? I think he hit the woodwork four times against Chelsea in the week. That's incredible, isn't it, man? So he I don't know what it is, but I've it seems like every Liverpool game I watch, Darwin Nunez hits the frame of the goal at least once, you know? Feel for the guy. I love him, though. He's pure chaos, honestly. He's a great character for the Premier League, and I love him. And I know Liverpool fans are really enjoying him a lot as well. As we're, uh, we're still deadlocked at 0-0 here. But that opening goal is, uh, is surely only a matter of time. We should have it. But instead, it's, uh, it's, it's still tied. And that might well do it for a, uh, an interesting first half, to say the very least. Quality chances, but no finishes. And that means that at the break, with 45 to go. Oh, We're tied. Well, we're his brights to blow for half time. But you best believe that's the AI doing that. The ref will let the game play on. Why is it they'll let the game play on for ages when it's the AI going on the offensive? They'll blow it as quick as they can when it's you. It's typical. Rodrigo gets away from Jao Gomez. Down the right hand side. Excellent work there from the ex Real Madrid forward. Back to Issa Cabore. He's developed brilliantly in this save. Dinks one in. Harlan nods down. There's Brecken. Plays it across. Bellingham shot. Finds the back of the net. A game with few chances, but quality over quantity. And that's what Guardiola will be saying to his Man City team. Don't worry about getting that many chances. Just make sure you get one good one and take it. Hey Jude, why do you have to do it to me, bro? <laughs> Brilliant finish. It's, it's a great hold-up to play, to be fair. Into the middle, finds a pocket of space and drills it past Carl. No complaints from my skipper out there today. Bellinger with the opener. I don't see us getting that many chances. So if we get one... Oh, Riddiger. Oh, no, no, no. Went the wrong way with Dedic. And now we're in trouble. We've got no one back at right back. The Bosnian too far forward. This spells danger. This spells game. This spells FA Cup. This spells Manchester City. Putting the engraving on the trophy. Jude with the brace. And Bellingham breaks our hearts at Wembley. Well, we're emptying the bench now. We know this game is, uh, is over. 16 to go. And it's a, uh, a quick-fire double from Jude to ensure that Manchester City will get something this year in the end. I mean, this is the best team in the world, man. It's, it's an incredible, incredible team that they've built within this save. Hold on. Oh, Edison with this. Well, I had to, I had to go in. Kanunen denied. It was a weaker right foot, to be fair. But Edison packs it away. Hang on. Ah, no, 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 no. Just, just one of those games where it comes down to who's more clinical. And in the end, it is Manchester City. Oh, wonderful little move there. And it, it'll be harsh on us if it comes free. It'll be very harsh. And Rushworth. Ah, oh, it's a pen. Joe Rodden, who I just brought off the bench, brings down Bellingham after the shot. So it's, it's one of those where he's trying to block the shot, really. But to be fair, to be fair, I don't have many complaints about that. Harlan says, Bellingham, screw your hat trick. I want to score at Wembley. This is a harsh scoreline on us, though. This is really harsh. Well, it's a bitter end to an otherwise memorable season where we will not win our first double of the save. The scoreline very harsh. It was nowhere near as one-sided as a 3-0 result will read. But in the end, we lost it late. It came out of who was more clinical. Bellingham with a brace and one from Haaland from the spot. And in the end, Man City will avoid the embarrassment of a trophy-less season. But it's proof right there to us. We might have won the championship. We're still second fiddle to these guys. They are still the best team in the world. And we know we'll be battling with them again next season for major honours.
Yes, an incredibly harsh scoreline. Com completely, completely undeserved, in my opinion. Because um, I, I, I think we were just as good. I, I'm not going to say we were better, but I think we were just as good. Hit the woodwork twice in the game. And in the end, just unfortunately, didn't have that finishing touch that Manchester City showed in that second half. But again, proof, proof right there that whilst they, they might have come up short in the Premier League to us, they might not have won the Carabao Cup, and they might have got knocked out of the Champions League semis, they are still the best team in England. And whilst they might not have the league to show for it, they have got the Cup. Disappointing end. Uh, really disappointed. Like, if we'd have lost it like 1-0 or 2-1, it would have been like, well, head up, boys. Head up, you know, head up. One of, one of, one of those things. One of those things, but it's like, free it all. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's like, come on, lads, I know you won the league, but, you know, bit of a, bit of a you know, better scoreline, please. <laughs> but again, just, just in the end, the, the, the quality shining through in that, uh, in that, uh, in, in, in that second half. Anyway, uh, that's that done. So what we'll do is we'll, uh, we'll, we'll end the season with uh, one final look. Never really like scoring. Mate, we hit the bar twice. <laughs> These these interview questions have got to be changed. Man, they? What we'll do is we'll end the season by seeing who won what in Europe, the Football League, the other major leagues, and one last look at the squad. So here we go. Uh, the Carabao Cup, I briefly showed this a couple of episodes ago, but it was Bournemouth who won the League Cup this season. The Conference League, which is always fascinating to me, was won in the end by the Gunners, overcoming FC Twente in the final. The Europa League saw a Spanish-Italian final where Napoli ran out winners on of that one. And as for the Champions League, what a reminder, we did top our group in the end, but unfortunately got knocked out by Bayern in the last 16 with the German Giants showing their pedigree. Uh, they themselves were knocked out by Man City, though, who they themselves were knocked out by Barcelona, who they themselves won the final. Yep, a repeat of the 2008 and 11 final, no, 2009 and 11 final, sorry, as Barcelona beat Manchester United for the third time in a CL final. In fact, that was the uh, same scoreline as the uh, 2011 final. I remember that one. It was at uh, Wembley. Um, right, what am I doing? Uh, yeah, uh, let's go. Uh, championship. Let's do the, uh, the other leagues then. Uh, championship this season was won by Sheffield United. Wow, the first time I've seen in this save where the winners of the championship finish sub-100 points. Practically every year, the winners have over 100 points. But this year, the Blades are up alongside Brentford in second, uh, with the playoffs being the Baggies, Forest, uh, Middlesbrough, and Southampton uh, in the playoffs this season. League One saw Sheffield Wednesday and Birmingham City go up automatically, with the playoffs being Plymouth, Blackpool, Portsmouth, and Barnsley in the third tier. And as for the fourth tier, Wigan, Carlisle, and Shrewsbury automatically promoted, with Leighton Orient, Cambridge, Stevenage, and and Colchester uh, in the playoffs in the fourth tier this season. If I remember correctly, Paris Saint-Germain finished third in league and last season. No such problems this year. Comfortable winners in the end as they reclaim their spot on top. Wow, Lyon were relegated. I mean, I know they've been bad this year in real life as well, but is that foreshadowing there? Who knows? Uh, Bayern Munich back on top in the Bundesliga. Four clear at Dortmund. Uh, we finished in second. Leipzig and Leverkusen uh, making up the Champions League places in Germany. The Serie A saw Inter crown champions again with Roma, AC Milan and the Europa League winners Napoli uh, in the top four as Juve missed out on European football altogether. Final champions by a point in the Netherlands with Ajax in second, Twente in third and PSV Eindhoven in fourth. Benfica, champions of Portugal, two clear of Sporting and uh, five clear, sorry, of Porto. I can't do maths, what's wrong with me? And as always, the Celtic Rangers 1-2. Either in the opposite order or in that one, but this year it was Celtic on top. Barca champions of Europe, but Real Madrid champions of Spain, with Villarreal in second and Real Sociedad in fourth in this year's La Liga. Now we'll do a couple more. Uh, Turkish Super League saw Galatasaray four clear of Besiktas with Fenerbahce uh, in third in this year's Turkish top tier. And I like to end on the MLS for my American fans as the seasons just began. Uh, New York City have jumped out to the lead there uh, in uh, both conferences in the uh, the one league table uh, in career mode right now. They are in pole position. So we shall end with one final look at the team and assess what we need for the new season. Uh, going into our seventh of the save, defending a Premier League title for the first time ever. You know, e e even though we don't have the best offensive record in the division this season, I am definitely thinking maybe we should replace Carl. Maybe we should have replaced Carl between the sticks. I, I don't know how much better he's going to get at 27 now. And I, I say this all the time, but it's like three, three golden gloves in a row. But he's not that world-class keeper that bails me out. 
Whereas you would have seen some games this season against world-class keepers. Like that game against Newcastle with Emi Martinez. That's what a world-class goalkeeper can do for us. You know, single-handedly win us points. And, well, in the case of Martinez, speaking of the World Cup, win trophies on his own. And maybe, just maybe, I mean, we love the rival, but maybe a world-class CAM to either split the game time with Canoonham or possibly see the rival drop to bench. I don't know. And with Ferguson, we'll have to think about what happens there. Is it a one and done for Evan, handing in that transfer request? Or will we just make like Jez on Peep Show and say, yeah, we're going to pretend it's not happening. <laughs> uh, but of course, this, this season, the biggest problem we have is the injuries, man. Loads and loads of injuries during the season. But I did say I like it. It's realistic. It's more challenging. It's how it should be, especially for us going into Europe for the first time ever. We had we had four big injuries for four big players towards the end of the season. Marrera coming in at right back, it was great to replace Delic. Hjalman, of course, one of our best players going down. And two great backups in Sinistera and Coita. They, they were big, big blows for us towards the end of the season. I'm not going to say that's why we didn't end up with the FA Cup as well but it definitely harmed our chances no doubt but of course we will be seeing a couple of players leave Jack Butland has had his two years here and we're letting him go on a free transfer but again, for, for Rushworth, 18 clean sheets and 38. When you look at the average rating there, I think with Carl, it's a bit deceptive because it's like when when we keep a clean sheet, ordinarily I've defended brilliantly, you know, so he hasn't really had that much to do. It's not like there's games where he's like single-handedly clawed out a clean sheet out of thin air, you know. It's, it's like if I've defended really well, we've got the clean sheet and Carl's not really been tested that much. So only one clean sheet and eight in the Champions League as well. I don't know. I don't know with Carl. We'll have to wait and see. We, we've got three academy keepers out on loan right now, including Scott Clark, who has grown to 84 overall, looking fantastic. He'll be back in the summer, so definitely thinking maybe we'll have him starting next year. And Carl is our cup goalkeeper, if you will. Or Gao is up four uh, in Turkey right now, so you'd love to see that developing nicely at Fenerbahce. Uh, bueno came in this season as a backup for Jordan Boz. Did pretty well. Grew a rating. Was uh, was all right. Did exactly what we expected, really. As a backup and understudy for the Aussie, he grew two ratings himself, three assists in 29, and 13 clean sheets. As well, he's been brilliant since coming in midway through season two, and the Aussie is still going to be our starting left back next year. Joe's got one more year. I'm hoping he's going to retire at the end of next season, so we won't need to give him a new contract. But uh, hopefully, Joe will make like Jamal and have one final season for us as the farewell year and one last start. Nathan Wood's probably going to go though. Now it's just squad centre half, barely gets on the pitch and not growing at 27 years old. Pacho came in. It was pretty solid to be fair. Big injury midway through the season, but 30 games in total. Got us a goal as well and 11 clean sheets too, averaging over one in every three. Not getting much better now, but a really solid partner for either Flamingo or Shulman. And speaking of the former, Ryan's still got a place to play, man. We still love him. Might have split his game time in CB this season, but 23 games and a goal as well. You love to see that. He scored his first goal for the club, I believe, too, getting on into that tattoo free kick. That was an amazing delivery too. And uh, we still love Ryan. He's going absolutely nowhere. The, uh, the two Greek Wonder Kids center hours out on loan in the championship right now. Both doing pretty decent out there as Garrido's gone up eight as well, back out in Argentina. Dedic got a three-month injury midway through the season, but once again, consistently brilliant. This guy is so consistent, man. 35 games, a goal, five assists, and 14 clean sheets as well. Barely puts a foot wrong and still managed to grow our rating despite the injury as well. I don't know whether I'll start him next year or Marrera that came in from the Foxes. He, of course, got that injury towards the end of the season. Daniel is still growing, but I kind of prefer Dedic, so I don't really know about that. I'll try and split the game time evenly next year, I believe, with uh, Amir also coming back from Leeds in the summer, though I might loan him out once again for next year. For Marchetti, thank you very much for all the years, man. Was it five or four years? I can't remember. But even so, he's joining Odense when the summer opens. Just a squad player, but a warrior. And, and what a guy he was. What a pickup on a free transfer from our first year in the Premier League all the way to now. 31 years old. Enjoy your retirement years in Scandinavia, bro. We'll always love the warrior, Marquesi. Uh, Garner came in on deadline day from Union Berlin on a cup prize deal. Eh, it was all right. Got me a couple of assists. Two uh, two in total in uh, in 12 games, including one in the semi-final, I believe. He was all right. He was okay as a, uh, a backup. The um, Hjalman's injury, a bit of a shame. Kind of stopped him in his tracks. But two assists and 18 clean sheets in 45. I still believe, personally, that he's better as a CB than a DM. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I've got my hands up in the, in the sky right now. I know people are like, what are you talking about, bro? Look at his stats there. He's clearly a CDM. But to me, I always feel he does better as CB. 
That's just my opinion. But, Shulman, shame about the broken toe towards the end of the season. But we love you, bro. Played a massive part in us getting our first ever Premier League title. The Iron Man might not have played all 38 in the Premier League, but he wasn't far off with 32. Five assists as well in the Premier League this season. Al Hassan Youssef, Iron Man, 28 years old and going absolutely nowhere. He might now be splitting the game time alongside Gomez and Hjalman and Al Ghana as well. We still love the Nigerian fighter. Uh, Jao Gomez, great season for him this year as well. Five assists and three goals and 33 in the league, growing a rating to 85 overall as well. He's been a steal for these past two years coming in from Wolves. We'd love to see that. And as for Sinistera, this is an interesting one. Not sure what to do about Sinistera in the summer. I think he'll be turning 30 during the summer. And as we know, Louise, he gets us a few goal contributions, but not that many. I've got to be honest with the squad wingers that are coming back and Noosa that came in as well. I might just sell him in the summer, getting that broken toe. I might make this my last year with Louise after three decent ones here, but nothing special. Noosa was a great pickup from Brighton on deadline day, though. Six goals in all competitions for us, five in the league, and also that one goal in the Champions League as well, going to 86 overall, upper rating two. What a signing he was to replace Charlie Connick. Tyler Johnson, the Americans, got up by three ratings out on loan right now, so we love to see that. Nice progression whilst he remains uh, waiting for his chance for first-team football. Sek has grown eight ratings, but still has a long way to go right now. Uh, playing in Saudi Arabia with Al Nasser. I think he's got one year left there as well, I think. I think. Um, and uh, as for Dylan Levitt, only the one overall rating increase for Dylan. But he's just he's just a squad CM now. He barely plays. He'll, he'll take the Marchetti role for next year. He'll stay for next season, but he'll, he'll barely play. Just the occasional cup game here or there. Uh, Traore didn't grow at all at Leicester. Well, that is rare and disappointing. Uh, but Healy grew three ratings out of Terro Dez right now. But for Anton Kanunen, great to see him get his potential back from EA. And now, of course, he's not he's not got any showing in the stats. That's because he's 22 years old. For those who don't play career mode or for those who don't play it much, basically, when a player hits 22, you, you can't see their potential anymore. It just it just doesn't get shown anymore. But it did go to showing great potential at the start of the season. Grew three ratings this year. And once again, the rifle. Absolutely phenomenal. 15 goals in 37 games in the Premier League, plus 12 assists as well. That hat-trick on the final day, firing us to our first ever Premier League Championship. 81 overall. And I, I, I still believe he'll get a little bit better. I still believe he can get to around 83, 84 for next season. Yes, he will never hit the heights. He should have done, but he's done nothing wrong. Absolutely nothing wrong with uh, Brennan growing six at Ibrox. Uh, Dan James, he's out of contract in a few weeks. I don't know whether to extend it or not now, really. One goal, one assist in 21. He only ever comes off the bench. He never starts a game. But at 78 overall, 31 years old. Squad wingers have surpassed him now. And he is homegrown, he is out of the academy, but I might just let him go. I might just let him go on a free and say, thanks for coming back in the service, Dan, all the way from season two to now. But you've won a League Cup, you won an FA Cup, you won a Premier League. It's time for you to leave altogether. Uh, Whitaker growing a rating, 78 overall. I think he's out of contract at the end of next season, I believe. Yep, I'm not sure if I'll sell him in the summer. I might, I'm not too sure, but... Abubakar Bangura, 13 games this year, only the two goals and the one assist as well, but that man of the match display against Fulham when he uh, when he bagged a brace, I believe, got both of those two goals. The injury stopped him developing more, but he grew two ratings to 81 overall. I gave him Dan James' seven at the start of the season. I do believe this guy's going to play some more important minutes next season as well if he keeps himself healthy, as Innocent Bamba is coming back from Brentford, I believe, in the summer after getting them promoted to the Premier League for next season. Uh, Matondo, out of at the end of next season, not growing anymore, literally never plays. I might just sell him in the summer as he's not going to get any better. But for Tattoo Oliver, winning the assist title this year with 15 in the Premier League and seven goals in 36, I, I often say it, I feel like he should probably give me a little bit more, but every now and then he shows how well class he is, man. This guy is still our highest rated player and still one of our very, very best. Upper rating to 88 overall. What a baller. What a baller. And more of a creator than a goal scorer. And um, Mendoza upper rating at Leeds right now. Osorio's gone up by three back in Argentina. Traore, the new Wilfred Bonny, is now up four to 80 overall right now with FC Heidenheim in the Bundesliga. I believe he'll be back in the summer, but I might loan him out again. For Brandon Vasquez, he's got two years left on his deal. Only the three goals in 18, but I like him as a squad striker as a different option with that 85 strength and 93 jumping at six foot two as well. I don't think I'll sell him. I don't need 
need to. So I might just keep him here as a squad striker. And as for Seku Koita, upper rating to 83 overall. This guy, nine goals and three assists in 20 games. Inconsistent game time, but consistent goal-to-game ratio. He always seems to get me a goal or an assist when he's on the pitch. And... Despite the broken toe, I think I'll keep him. But for Evan Ferguson, that's the big one. He submitted a transfer request. I can't take it off. I can't block offers. He's probably going to go in the summer. But up two ratings to 87 overall. Our top scorer in the league with 20 and 32. Chipped in with five assists as well. And his hat-trick in the FA Cup semi-final got us to the final with six in five cup games. That's impressive, though, of course. Most came against championship sides. But 26 goals in 38 games and eight assists as well. If it's a one and done or whether we keep him against his will for next season... We're yet to find out, but whatever happens, we'll always be thankful for the goals, Ferguson, firing us to that Premier League title. But that will do it for the season finale and season six as a whole guy. As a whole guy. So massive thank you for watching. I really hope you have enjoyed it. Have a fantastic day, guys. Much love to you all, and I'll see you for a brand new season. Our seventh year at the Swansea.com Stadium will get underway. We're trying to defend our Premier League title and go further in the Champions League and recapture that FA Cup as well very soon.